In today's video, we're gonna go over each and every Ableton Live file extension, where you can find them and how you can create them. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of live performance software with building a stable live performance rig and with mastering sound design. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so Ableton has a whole host of file extensions nine to be exact, let's check them out right now. So, our first file extension is a .als file, .als. And if I save any live set, it is going to save as a .als file. So let's go ahead and save this as file extension. Now, when I open up my finder here, you'll see file extension. If I go inside, you'll see .als, and this is an Ableton Live set. Now, interesting thing to note that if I were to go in here and choose save live set as again, and choose file extension, it's going to create a duplicate, or it's going to replace it. So this is really good for keeping a version history, um, if that's something that matters to you, and when you go back into the finder, and you go into this folder, you will see a second uh, version of that as well. So the next file extension we're gonna go over is .alp, and this stands for an Ableton Live Pack. Now this is what happens when you take an Ableton Live set, you save all of its contents, and you compress them into a really easy to share format. So if you come File, Manage Files, and choose Manage Project, it's gonna give you an option to create a pack. If you click it, and you save File Extension Pack, You'll now see when you go into your finder .alp, and you can open this on any computer and it should open so long as all of the plugins that you're using match up. So this is a great way uh, to share your file. All right, our next file extension is a .asd file, which is an analysis file. And this is what happens when you add an audio clip into Ableton. So I'm just gonna drop this percussion clip here and I'm gonna choose file, Save live set as, and this is maybe our 1.2.3. And then maybe I'll do collect all and save so I can show you what this file extension looks like. Now when we head over here into the finder and we look at our samples, you're gonna see we've got this .asd file. And this is basically Ableton uh, taking that information and kind of trying to figure out where the beat is, what the tempo information might be. This way, when you open this up again later, it doesn't have to reanalyze all of your files, which is a pretty nice feature. Okay, our next file extension is a .adg, and this is a file extension for device racks. So if you create a preset, let's go into the user library here, you'll see that it comes up as an adg. Um, and this one, if I were to drop it in, this is from the Pro Piano Effects collection, uh, would bring in your uh, effects. Um, same thing here, .adg is a preset file. So anytime you save your instrument racks into Ableton, you're gonna see that file extension .adg. Now our next file extension is .adv, and this is a device preset. So really great example of this is if you save like your ideal version of a reverb or something, or anything like that. So let's go into audio effects here, um, and I'll choose my reverb, because I actually have created one here. So this is one of my favorite reverb presets, and you'll see it's got that .adv extension, but these are actually pretty easy to make. If you drag something in here and you do whatever it is, you can click the save button, and it'll give you the .adv, and if you want this to be your default version of it, you can actually come in here and click save as default preset. And now anytime I drop Redux uh, onto a file extension, or onto an audio channel strip rather, it will be um, that version. So that's your .adv files. Our next uh, Ableton Live file extension is a .alc, and this is a MIDI clip. So if I were to come in here um, and create a MIDI clip that's got some notes in it, and drag that into my user library. Well, I'll give this a name here, test clip. You'll see this becomes uh, an ALC file, which I can drag and drop in. Now, the cool thing about this is it also carries the information from the channel strip. So 
Um, and here I've got my Arpeggio JX Wave, and when I drag that Ableton Live clip in, you'll see it actually reloads that instrument. So it's going to save everything from your whole channel strip, which is a really uh, nice feature. Okay, our next file extension is AGR, and this is a groove file. So uh, there are grooves in the core library here, and you'll see um, we've got some uh, groove options. And these are basically just ways you can manipulate a clip. So I'll uh, create a new clip here. Okay, and right now if I play this, it's super straight. But if I apply groove to it, it's gonna change uh, that eighth note pattern to match whatever groove it is that it drops in. So it's gonna carry some rhythm information and it can be altered a bit uh, from here as well. Okay, and our last but not least uh, file extension is .amxd. And this is an Ableton Live Max for Live device. So um, if you are in your Max for Live area over here, you'll see all of these files have .amxd files. And if you wanna learn more about how you can use Ableton for live performance, I want you to check out this video on the screen right now that's gonna help you get set up performing with an Ableton Live setup. And I've also got a link on the screen right now for some of my favorite audio effects in Ableton. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time on Live Keyboardist.